Hello friends typically eats food that's labeled feeds two to four people completely on his own here, bringing you another Dota 2 video on why simply adding whoops to your chat wheel will take you from whatever badge you're currently at to the next one. Before we get into it, I want to do a bit of an experiment. Think about the following chat wheels and tell me what they mean to you. First, an ally pings an allied anti-mage's battle fury. Then they ping the game timer. Then they chat wheel well played. In my experience, that's usually somebody flaming their teammate for getting a late Battle Fury. Even though it is abundantly toxic, I think it's still amazing that this communication goes beyond spoken words or written language. Most Dota players know exactly what this means without words even having to be exchanged. And this isn't an uncomplicated concept. To understand this series of chat wheels, you have to understand the concept of item timings. You need to know that an early battle fury is essential on anti-mage, you have to know about the toxicity of pubs, and so forth. Imagine showing that same image to a family member who doesn't play Dota. You and I both know that this communication is toxic and negative, but your family member would have no idea what to make of it, it would probably be neutral. In Dota, I think we often take for granted how easy it is to communicate stuff with people that don't even speak the same language as us, because we have this shared in-game chat wheel and ping language. This shared language can be used to an incredible effect if you properly embrace it. About a year ago, I quickly learned this fact during a period where I was extremely fascinated with the psychological difference between top 100 players and regular immortal level players. During this time, I made an effort to ask pro players a lot more questions regarding what changed for them mentality-wise on the road to top 100. I discovered a very strange but effective trait that is shared between all of these players. They all have whoops on their chat wheel or something equivalent. Bear with me because I realize that sounds completely ridiculous at first glance, and that's because the actual chat wheel line doesn't matter. In fact, the chat wheel doesn't matter. What matters is that a chat wheeled whoops is just a good example of efficient verbal de-escalation. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, first let me ask you a question. How often do you play a pub that has virtually zero toxicity in it? Well, this is Dota 2, so that was obviously a fairly rhetorical question. Your answer should be basically never, and that's because Dota is a game that breeds and motivates toxicity. And I'm not comfortable just blaming the community for this. Dota is incredibly stressful. It's actually one of the things that makes the game pretty amazing. Not only does it take a huge time investment just to feel remotely good at the game, individual games can take up to an hour out of your day. So losing one can feel insanely devastating. But winning can also feel literally euphoric. But the most important thing here is that we can all agree that for whatever reason, Dota is a stressful and toxic game. On top of this, Dota is a game that is filled to the brim with heroes that are complete dog shit on their own, but broken when paired with others. In fact, the way the math works out in the game, most heroes can't even kill another one from full to zero without the help of an ally. So, if you can figure out how to effectively play around your stressed and toxic teammates in every game, you'll obviously win a lot. And that's exactly what many of these top 100 players have mastered, whether on purpose or by accident. When you make a mistake in a pub, you have three options. One, ignore the mistake and move on. This is not bad, but the problem is your teammates will stop trusting you and stop playing around you because they think you're just a bad player who is going to keep making such mistakes. Two, you can defend the mistake, I would say this is a horrible option because not only will it make people not trust you, but they'll also hate you, which means you're going to be much more likely to lose. Or three, you can admit your mistake. This is also not bad because it acknowledges that such a mistake is out of character for you, and so people will trust you again and play around you, but typing things in a fast-paced game like Dota, that sounds like a recipe for disaster. People are going to get pissed off because they just want to focus on the game. And here is exactly where the chat wheel comes in. As much as this thing is memed on, I genuinely think that the chat wheel and ping wheel are some of the most ingenious design choices in gaming. They allow us to communicate such complicated concepts in any language in real time with little to no effort. And top 100 players all value having whoops, sorry, or something equivalent on their chat wheel. 
And that's no coincidence. And that's because this chat wheel opens up a fourth option when you make a mistake in a pub. It communicates that you made a mistake, you acknowledge it, and that it is not in your character to continue making such mistakes. So, your teammates will keep playing around you, trusting that you'll press your buttons better in the future, and you don't have to piss them off by writing an essay about your mistake. Just like the Battle Fury chat wheel at the start of the video, all of this is communicated in one single line, and every Dota player knows that. So, I don't see a point in not using something so damn powerful. On top of this, it's also a really light-hearted way to break any tension that is building between toxic allies in-game, which is incredibly valuable. Imagine for a second that you see somebody walking down the street with what looks to be a very expensive vase. It drops and shatters into a thousand pieces. If the person starts laughing, maybe you get a light-hearted chuckle as well. If you see them immediately begin to profusely cry, maybe you feel depressed or possibly confused. If you see them immediately start screaming at somebody else, blaming them for the mistake, maybe you feel agitated or angry. All I'm saying is that a person's response to their own mistake can evoke some pretty powerful emotions in people that aren't even involved. And I feel like that makes a lot of sense because in nature, humans obviously had to be really good at reading each other's emotions. Let's say some dude eats a mushroom, I look at him, I see in his face, he's feeling pain right now. Okay, I'm not gonna eat that mushroom. But if I look at him and he's smiling and feeling like he's having a good time, all right, that's dinner, I'm gonna eat a mushroom, sounds good. Anyway, if it wasn't abundantly clear, I am a gamer, not a psychologist, but this sort of natural instinct that people have, I think, has carried over to gaming. My point is, you can use your mistakes to bring up the positivity in the team, even with those that weren't involved in the mistakes, so long as you respond to them in a funny and lighthearted way. When I worked on Mega League, I had the privilege of asking OG Seb a question that Honestly, I've wanted to ask him for a long time. Basically, my question was along the lines of, As a team, how highly does OG value crafting language that allows you to communicate extremely complicated concepts quickly in Dota 2? And it's OG. I mean, this is a two-time TI winning team, so I imagined that they care a lot about communication, psychology, and so forth. But his answer definitely exceeded expectations. He basically confirmed that they do intentionally try to craft and train themselves to speak language to communicate things succinctly, and that he's even overheard teams steal their words and phrases, and in these moments he just kind of finds it funny because he understands that it's good, everybody's trying to win, and he doesn't mind. So I don't think it's shocking that OG is the team that is notorious for spamming their chat wheels where they go far beyond just using whoops or sorry. Obviously, a lot of it is subconscious and they do just find chat wheeling funny, but that's exactly the point. Their silly little chat wheels break the tension of the looming threat that losing a game will lose them literally millions of dollars and that is insanely powerful. Now obviously your pubs and my pubs have way less pressure than the international, but they also have way more toxic teammates. So it doesn't exactly balance out, but if OG can break the tension in literally TI by using the chat wheel when they make mistakes, you can do it in your pubs as well. But what if it doesn't work? What if you have a teammate that is so toxic that whoops has literally zero effect on them? Who cares? It costs one button and one mouse drag, and if it does work out, it essentially solves toxicity and trust issues, which are two massive reasons that Dota games are lost. This has such a ridiculously low cost and high reward that there's no reason not to do it. Anyway, that's it for this video, thank you so much for watching, and at the end of this video, I actually do have some really good news, finally, about the situation that I'm in. Uh, the liking, commenting, and subscribing has been working. Uh, I've been paying my lawyer, and Mr. Brunsworth, my lawyer, has actually discovered that the leader of the hobo armies here in my city is Pip Flanagan. You might have heard of the Flanagan Empire. It's a hobo empire, probably the strongest empire across North America. And it's good and bad news, because basically... This, this means that if I go to any city, if I move, I will still be harassed. I will still be at war. So 
I need to figure out a way to infiltrate the Flanagan Hobo Empire, and I'm working closely with Mr. Brunswick to figure out exactly how to use this information to my advantage. So if you have any idea of how I can infiltrate the Flanagans or get them to stop harassing me, uh, I would really appreciate that. And I would also appreciate you checking out my Patreon because uh, Mr. Brunsworth is very expensive. He charges in full dominoes and he orders triple cheese and triple pepperonis every single time that he gets that. So uh, go to go ahead and go to my Patreon. I do post tier lists, replay reviews, probably some other hobo bullshit. And uh, I would really appreciate you giving it a gander.